Hi guys, <laughs> we're here. We're live in the glitter pit. It's Wednesday. It's one minute after three. Sorry, I was chatting with you guys and I got distracted. So it's that time we're gonna give an early bird glitter giveaway or actually glitter spinner. I don't have a glitter giveaway today, but I do have the glitter spinner. So let's go ahead and do that. I got to get back in my groove. You know how it is when you're like away for a while, you kind of forget like what is going on. So let me go ahead and put this in picture and picture. There we go. Look, this started today. Yay. I know, I know, I know there's a lot of back orders and I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on. I wish I had all the answers, you guys. Seriously, I'm so sorry. I know there was a couple items that were already sold out before it even went live this morning. And I wasn't able to get all the paper for my paper share this morning. And I was up at 4.30 with Richard. It was like there's two packs of paper that I'm short. So it says that they will be available on the 11th. So the paper share... <sighs> We'll be a little late getting out because I'm not going to send it and then resend the two extra packs. It's going to cost double that way. So I'm just going to hold off. It's probably going to take that much time to get it here. Maybe I'll express the other two packs. But um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff already on back order. So I'm so sorry. I'm so appreciative of your patience. And I know I've heard from so many of you. And we as demonstrators are upset too. I mean, I don't know what else to do and say. I'm just sad that on a catalog launch that there's already back orders. But we're going to have a good day. We're going to have a good time stamping today, right? So let's just focus on that. Okay. So we can go through the catalog if you want to later. But we're going to make the cute box first. But before we do that, we're going to give the glitter spinner. All right. So let me go ahead and put this catalog over there also there are now i was misunderstood on how i was reading this promotion i thought it was like a five packs of all the paper apparently the papers are sold individually and these are added to the online exclusives so there's five packs of paper each with their item number and i do believe i have the link listed down below in the description box so if you want to go check out those papers over on the online exclusives you guys can do that too and then also it's on my blog i think today and it will be on there tomorrow so that started today too this is the brand new host code this is for a gift if your order's under 150 dollars and you want to use this host code you're more than welcome to use it there is this host code is posted over on my website too all right so in case you forget it this was just open today Okay, so this would be good for at least oh, till the end of the month. And then the gift should go out late September, early October. Oh, I don't even like saying that, October. <laughs> Yuck. And then the PDF slash printable. I did get one done. It's a miracle. I have been, seriously, I have been in the retreat mode since we, okay, so we came, we were supposed to be home on the 4th, because Richard had to go back to work on Tuesday, so we were supposed to be home by Tuesday, but we ended up coming home on Friday afternoon, and then Saturday, Sunday, Jesse and Nick bought another house, well, bought a house, they moved, they're moving out of their house, moving into another house, so, but this house needs a little love and care, so we're going over and helping them, you know, do a little painting a little electrical and stuff so um we were over there all weekend so i wasn't even in my office when we came home early so i've been in my office since um i'd say officially monday so but i've been in the retreat mode because i'm counting like down the days until our retreat in october so our retreat is october 5th 6th and 7th i also announced in the newsletter today so if you guys haven't had a chance to read that check that out I would really like to know if you guys are interested in doing a retreat, make and take packet to go. This is where you're going to get the packet of all the cards that everybody's going to make at the retreat. And my husband, this was his idea. He said, well, since I'm cutting for everybody at the retreat, we can cut extra packets if everybody's wanting to buy the, the packet to go. So 
He's already cutting them out, so we just want to kind of get a ballpark figure on how many people we should cut for. So if you are interested, I'll be posting more information about that over the next couple weeks with the PayPal button so you can add it to your cart. I don't want to put it out too early because the kits won't be going out until after the retreat, which is in October. So we're still out like four weeks, but um, I did post the card packet amount for the the kit and the shipping and the cards are really really super cute now if you guys are familiar with my weekly card kit it's going to be very similar to that so now the card kits do not come with stamps adhesive your scissors your stamp and blend your die cuts nothing as far as product it's just the consumables and the accessories and stuff you know like the ribbon and embellishments and stuff and we will do the embossing part like if there is like embossing with the embossing folder and we will also die cut out the shapes if the card is required with the shape of a circle or something unless it's required that you stamp because we can't stamp images with the card kits either that's against policy so if it does require you to stamp before you die cut, then you're going to have to do that die cut for yourself. But the cards are really super cute. And I want to do the cards with the retreat first because they are a pain to come to the retreat. So, but just know that I'm going to be doing the live videos with you for over the next five weeks. So we'll do two cards a week and I'm hoping to get the card kit sent out to you so you can make them with me live right here in the glitter pit all right so if that's something that interests you let me know and then also to be in the future newsletters too all right so this is the the project we're making today actually let me show you actually let's do the spinner first i get sidetracked sorry it's like my my friend devette she always says squirrel glitter <laughs> we get sidetracked a lot all right, so let's do it. Let me get my iPad over here. I'm going to spin the comments. And actually, if the back orders start, you know, getting to be a real big issue, I don't even know if I'm going to be doing card kits for the month of August because I'm already stressed out with the retreat stuff. So I will keep you guys all posted. You guys know, if you guys subscribe to my newsletter, you guys will be knowing about that. And then also on my website, okay? So let me turn on my comments here. There we go. All right, let's spin it. Yay! Whoa! <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> All right, I got two items I'm going to give away to you today, guys. All right, the first one is going to... Norelda! 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 Norelda, you're going to get these. These are the Ombre Matte decorative dots norelda n-o-r-e-l-d-a gram g-r-a-h-a-m all right you're getting the ombre let me just put ombre on here all right i better give a kleenex before i'm sniffling in your ears hold on a second all right so norelda i will get these sent out to you tomorrow and let me see where's my um right there there we'll just put them up there so norelda you got the ombre decorative dots now i have these these are the new adhesive back sparkle gems these are so pretty so let's go ahead and spin for that why is it doing that come on now Maybe it's because I've been gone, right? It's not knowing how to act. All right, here we go. Nicole! Yay, Nicole! I got both of your guys' address. Yay! All right, so let me see. What were those again? <laughs> Sparkle gems. Sparkle gems. All right, Nicole, I got your address too. And I will get those sent out to you tomorrow, too, with you and Norelda, all right? Congratulations. Yay. Ooh. <laughs> I got a whisper, I guess. Yay, guys. Congratulations. All right, now I can show you the box we're making today. 
But I'm going to first show you the one that I got. It's actually was a gift from my friend Janet at Backstage. And let me take that off of there. All right. All right. So this came from Janet. And I haven't seen Janet in like at least a few years. We used to get together with her and um, Susan at Founder Circle. Do you guys remember those days? <laughs> those days are long gone. But um, anyway, we used to have like a little stamping retreat at their house, at Susan's house. And Janet Baker and Susan and somehow they're all related to Shelly, I think. But they're like... They've been demonstrators forever. But anyway, I got to see Janet at Backstage in Las Vegas. And I went up to her and I hugged her. And she got in her bag and she whipped out this cute little box. OMG. So, so cute. But wait till you see what's inside. It's so much cuter inside. All right, so let me show you. Now we're going to change it up a little bit. So if you've already seen my printable, you know I'm going to change it up a little bit. So this is, has a belly band. But look inside. It's got a little... Now, I immediately thought it was a mummy, right? So this is a Rice Krispie treat to look like a mummy. Or it could be a ghost. I mean, whatever you think. But I just thought it looked more like a bum... Um, a, a bummy. Yeah, a bummy. No, a mummy because of the, you know, the wrap of the ribbon. Isn't that adorable? And how stinking easy is that? It's all in the presentation, right? For the little kitties. So, but look how cute the box is. So, we're going to make the Rice Krispie Treat too. I had to go to the store and get Rice Krispie Treats. So, these will, I think I bought a box of them at Kroger's for like, they were 40 in a box. So, I'm taking them to the retreat. So, everybody that's coming to the retreat, you guys all can have a Rice Krispie Treat. Because Richard and I are not eating them. <laughs> but they, I'm sure they're going to be good. All right, so then that's in the box. And then you got the belly band. Now, this belly band is kind of hard for me to put on. I think maybe the, the belly band is a little tight. So keep that in mind when you're making yours. Now, I also said on my website that I know many of you don't celebrate Halloween. You can still use this box idea for Christmas or Thanksgiving. It's so cute. Just change the decor or the decoration, you know, the stamps and the paper. That's it. All right, so here's my version. And I'm going to show you some stuff that you can put in this box. Not only the mummy. Now, this is my version of the mummy. Because the ribbon that Janet used, I don't think we still have. So, I think that's retired. So, I'm going to use, I think, a current ribbon. What is the name of it? This is the frayed ribbon. And it's the white frayed ribbon. So it even looks more like authentic if it's a mummy. You know how you... My aunt dressed up as a mummy one year for Halloween. And we took bed sheets and we cut them and we wrapped her whole body. I remember I was so little, but I remember that like, like it was yesterday. But anyway, this ribbon looks legit. Like it really could be for a mummy or a ghost. Okay. And I'm using those sparkle gems for the eyeballs. Nicole, you're getting a pack. So you can make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them if you want. Or even the smaller eyes. Okay? So that's all I did with mine. I think Janet used the, the black matte dots, maybe. I think those are still available. I just grabbed these because they were on my shelf. But isn't it cute? All right. So we're going to make that. But I'm going to show you the other candy. So now I have my box here. So it also has a belly band. Now the fence and the moon. We're using the glow in the dark paper. And this stuff is like really, really glow in the dark. It's like really awesome. Now I haven't stamped on it. But I'm thinking it's probably going to be like the watercolor paper. You guys know how that is. If you don't use the Stamparatus or something on it. It's probably going to not stamp very good. But... My thought is, is that, yeah, it's got some texture to the glow in the dark. Can you even see it? I can see it. Can you see it, kind of? Maybe not. But it really does glow in the dark. Maybe I'll shut my light off later. All right, so, um, but yeah, it does have some texture. So my thought when buying this paper was just to cut for images, like the moon and the fence. So that's what I was kind of going with that hole with the 
the glow in the dark paper. But this comes in the six by six, and this is in the mini catalog, and I think it's on back order. Oh, I know it, guys. I'm so sorry. All right, so let me show you what's in my box. We're gonna make the the mummy with the rice crispy treat. I think. Hold on. I thought I brought another. Maybe I'll do a mummy with the uh, the cheese and crackers or peanut butter and crackers. I thought I brought another Reese's over here. And then a Nutty Buddy can fit in here too. So maybe you could do a mummy or a ghost in that too if you want. Because it fits really good in there. And then see the peanut butter and crackers fit in there. Well, I thought they would. Yeah. Yeah, they fit in there. Well, they're... Yeah, it's a little tight on the top. Because see what happens is the box has got to go in here like this to get the cute shape. But the belly band will hold the shape for you. Okay. All right. So are you guys ready to make it? I am ready. I am ready. And I was telling everybody early in the early bird chat that I was thinking of, because with this, the bag of bones dies being on back order, I know, I was thinking of maybe making it into a Christmas box, but I ran out of time. Because then that would mean I'd have to change my PDF and change my pictures, take new pictures, write a new blog post, you know, all that. It's a lot involved in doing these videos. All right, so let's go ahead and give you the measurements of our pieces. I got a whole piece of <clears throat> pumpkin pie. We're going to use that for my base of my box. Got my measurements in front of me. All right, so we're going to need our trimmer. We're going to cut and score with our paper trimmer. Are you guys ready? Love the to-go packet. Yay! Thank you, Richard. Pat Patricia says. Hi, Patricia. All right, so let's go ahead and cut this. Now, this piece of cardstock is 8.5 by 11, so we're just going to cut an inch off at 10 inches. So it's going to be 8.5 by 10. Okay? 8.5 by 10. Yep. All right, so then we're going to take on the eight and a half inch side. We're going to score across the top <clears throat> at one and a half. This is the eight and a half inch side across the top, right? Okay, so one and a half. <clears throat> one and a half and seven. I better lay that straight. So one and a half and seven. Okay, then we're going to turn it on the 10 inch side and we're going to score it at two. Score, not cut. Two, three and a half, six and a half, <clears throat> and eight. All right, and then our designer paper, which is Them Bones designer paper. This is a piece that's got like rows on the bottom and rows on the top, and then it looks like sky in the center. This piece of designer paper is cut at two and seven eighths by five and a quarter, and that's going to fit inside of the box. At least that's what Janet did. I'm totally casing Janet because I love her box. All right, and we're going to take our scissors. Let me get my paper slips instead. <clears throat> All right, so before I fold it, what we're going to do is we're going to cut our four corners and we're going to cut the score line up to the second score line going up. And then you're going to remove this bottom rectangle box right there. And you're going to do this the same way on all four corners. So cut up to the second score line and then remove this bottom rectangle like that. Okay, so you're going to have your cut lines here. <clears throat> then cut the other end the same way.
Okay. <clears throat> I feel like I got a frog in my throat or something all of a sudden. All right. Oh, and then our belly band is also with them bones designer paper. And this is cut at two by nine and three quarter. So we're going to need that for the belly band. Okay. All right. Now we're going to grab a ruler. Do I even have a ruler over here? Hmm. All right. I got this ruler here. And I need my stylist or my, where's my, there it is. I'll just use my one with my Simply Scored. All right, so <clears throat> on this side here and the other side, right where the, the flaps are right here, the, the center section right here and right here should be three inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a ruler and actually, I'm going to take my pencil first. We're going to, yeah, this measures three inches exactly. So we're going to make a tiny tick mark at one and a half, right in the center. So line it up at three. And then make a little pencil mark at one and a half on both sides, or top and bottom, right? And then you're going to take that ruler with your stylist or your take your pick tool, just with the one that's got the scoring stylist on it. And we're going to, you can use your, let me use that, Stampin' Pierce mat or paper piercing mat or whatever. And you're going to take your, I took my ruler to to Jessie's house because she wanted me to do some cutting for her bedroom window. So I don't have my ruler over here, my Stampin' Up! ruler, but a ruler will just do. So you're going to score from the that cut line here down to that tick mark with the pencil mark. So you're going to make a little V here. Okay? And then do the other side. And then do this exact same way on this opposite side over here. <clears throat> I tried to bring over some pictures from our two-week vacation pretty much, but my iPad wasn't taking my pictures for some reason. I don't know why. All right, let's fold all our score lines now and then burnish them with the bone folder. Oh, you can erase your pencil lines too. I'll do that here in a second. But before we put the box together, we got a stamp too. And I'm gonna cut these tabs down. So I'm just gonna angle cut them, miter them, whatever you wanna call it. Just cut the edges off a little bit so they form the box a little bit easier and cleaner, I guess. I still got to cut and design two more cards. And it was so funny because I went to the backstage event with Stampin' Up! in Las Vegas. And I got, I think I got my last two cards that I needed. So I needed two more cards and I wanted to make a Christmas card and I wanted to make a, a fall card, like a Thanksgiving card. And I think I got it. I got to make them to see if I got enough product because the designer paper I'm using, I couldn't get so now with these, I'm folding the points backwards and forwards so they go together really nice. And then I'm going to erase my pencil lines too. Okay, so let's erase my, I'm going to use my sand eraser, but it does better. All right. That's that. Now we're going to stamp. Now I'm going to be using the stamp set called Tricks and Treats. Let me show you the two stamp sets. 
So this is the stamp we're using for the bats right here. And this is in the mini catalog, Tricks and Treats. This also has a die that is so super cute with the candy corn. It's got a little bag. It's so cute. And the Frankie. If you guys got my newsletter, you guys got a sneak peek of the project from yours truly. That was my project. It's a cute fun fold card. And I use that Frankie on that. It's so cute. All right. And then the bag of bones, which is very popular. But the die is sold out. So, um... I'm going to stamp with that today with you guys. But I'm going to stamp the Happy Halloween. And then we're going to stamp the, the full body of the skeleton and the cat. Look at these cute. We're going to emboss that. All right, so this would be considered the front of my box. So I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to stamp the top edge with the bats. So let me get my black Memento ink. I'm just going to stamp. Right along the edge of the top of my box. Remember, this is from the Tricks and Treats stamp set. Very spooky, right? <laughs> Not really. All right, and then we're going to stamp... Now, this is what else I did. I did this ahead. I did all the die cutting and everything already ahead of time. But we're going to take our two tombstones. I have another tombstone here. So I cut this one out. Whoopsie. Don't get that on there. I cut the larger tombstone. These were what was down in New Orleans. Everywhere you went, the cemeteries, they had these big tombstones. But um, this is using the smoky slate. And then the smaller one... This actually looks like it fits right inside there, but I'm going to use it as another tombstone, and it's going to be in the basic gray. And we're going to stamp on that with the uh, Boo to You. So that's why I'm calling this the Halloween Boo Treat Box. So Boo to You right along the top of the tombstone. <laughs> I can so see my dad saying that. Not that he was a big fan of Halloween, but he was a jokester. All right, now we're going to put some black dimensionals. I have the mini and the full size. I'm going to put the full size on the back of... That one didn't come off very good. On the back of this tombstone. All right, and then we're going to set that aside. And I think that's all the stamping as far as for the memento ink. Now we're going to stamp on the black. I'm going to show you what I did for that. I'm going to take my embossing buddy. Remember our embossing buddy, our tweezers, there's a little paintbrush. All that is in the accessory, embossing accessory toolkit, I believe is what it's called. So I'm going to use the embossing buddy to prevent the static because we're going to emboss with the Versamark and the white embossing powder onto black cardstock. It just makes the skeleton look really cute. All right, so I have my skeleton right here. Stamp that. And then we're going to use the cat. Let me take my bats off of here. Oh, that's not going to fit on there. Put my boo on the other one. Okay, we're going to take the cat, the skeleton cat. <laughs> There's a skeleton dog, too. And I was going to actually use the dog, but he was facing the opposite way, and I didn't want to remove my skeleton. So I'm going to put my cat over here. All right, and then we're going to, we're going to use our white embossing powder. There we go. Oh, I just spilt it all over. So white embossing powder. That's why I should have my tray out here, right? So cute. All right, now we're going to heat set this. Let me scoop up this stuff here. All right. This white embossing powder is in the basics, which comes with black, white, and clear. All right, we're going to use our heat tool. 
get that warmed up a little bit. Do any of you guys watch Ghost Adventures on the Travel Network? Um, there's a show. I like that kind of show. I don't know. It's not like I believe in ghosts, but I just kind of like that show. But the Ghost Adventures, the host of the show is Zach Bagans. And his museum was down in Las Vegas, downtown, right on the strip. And Richard and I were riding the bike. And we drove by and Richard said, <clears throat> is Zach from Las Vegas? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I think I just seen his museum. And I'm like, no way. So we turned around and we went back and it was like a four. I know it's like Gilligan's Island. A three hour tour. <laughs> it was actually a four hour tour. But it was so awesome. But it wasn't like um scary or because i don't like haunted houses and all that you know so isn't that cute oh i love it so anyway so but it wasn't like ghost or anything like that because that's usually what his show is about ghost adventures but his museum is like about like serial killers like jack kevorkian and all you know all like John Wayne Gacy, I think his name was. And just like a museum of like stuff about them and about what they've done and stuff. And it was, you know, it was kind of, they said it was kind of haunted, the museum with the relics and stuff that they had there. But it was just very fascinating. I'm so glad we went. Richard took me there. I loved it. And it was a total surprise, like off the beaten path. It was like, oh, let's go. All right, so we're going to cut. I'm not going to actually cut these with you, but I'm going to show you what I did. So hopefully you got these. I don't think you got them today because they've been on back order forever. But um, when you get these, these are really cute. So you have the one that's already cut out for the whole body. So it just lines up perfect. And then the cat. Okay. And then there's the dog. But you can see on the whole collection, there's a lot of pieces. You can actually build your own skeleton too. But look, it's got a cowboy hat. It's got cowboy boots. So cute. And look, it's got a lady's hat. And then it's got like a fedora and it's got like a top hat, a cane and a bow tie. Look at the dog. Isn't he cute? So very, very cute stamp set. You guys will love it when you get it. I promise. It's very fun. All right. So let's put these before I lose them. Put them back on the board. All right. So I went ahead and cut those out already. So I have my skeleton right here. Already got my black dimensionals on there. And then my kitty cat, my fence. I've already die cut out with the, the um, glow in the dark. And the kitty cat. Now where's my moon at? Where's my moon? All right. Maybe I won't be adding a moon. I just cut my moon too just to make sure I had it. And I don't see it unless it fell on the floor. This thing, you know, I don't know how somebody can sit in one. There it is. <laughs> Thank you. There's my moon. All right, so we already cut all those out. And now we're going to go ahead and put our box together. Yeah, I just sit in one spot, like right here. I mean, you guys can see I don't move. I mean, I can see if I got up and moved somewhere, but I didn't. I can lose something just by looking at it. All right, so we're going to flip these tabs in, and I'm going to put adhesive. You can use your tear and tape. You can use liquid glue. I think I used liquid glue on my orange one, my first one. I want to use this stamp and seal on this one. And I'm covering the tab really nicely with all the glue because I don't want it to come apart. And you can also use the stamp and seal plus. If I had a choice between the two, I like this better. Stamp and seal. But it's everybody's preference, whatever you like, you know? All right, and then we're just going to put our tabs inside the box. Pretty easy. Right? So they're going in the inside. And then do the other side. And it looks like a coffin, doesn't it? 
Should be Dracula in there, right? Isn't that who should be in there? Dracula or a mummy. All right, and then see how this comes in. That's why we wanted to fold it both ways so it goes in really nice because it gives it a nice shape. Now, I'm overlapping left to right. And then you're just going to squeeze it at the top right here so it's kind of got that angle. See how that is an angle like that? on the bottom and the sides it's a cute little i don't know what shape that is but i like it okay all right now let me see let me just take this rice crispy treat off here i'm going to make it with you again i'll use the same ribbon i'll show you exactly what i did let me take my sparkly eyes off of here i don't think i can reuse them because it's got that ribbon on there but we'll see I'll put them on my finger. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to take this ribbon, and let me show you the ribbon again. This is in the annual catalog, and it's called the White Frayed Ribbon, three-fourths inch. Yeah, but it is frayed. Look how it's like, like cloth, like a mummy, right? Or a ghost. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it kind of to the back and I'm just going to hold that there with my finger and I'm just going to start wrapping it around and there's really no right or wrong with this I'm sure you probably don't even need me to demonstrate this but I thought I better just in case right and then one thing if you don't seal it down then you can just slide it up you know and get it in the center of the Rice Krispie Treat and then what I did with mine, I think that's the end with the glue dot. Let me make sure. Put a glue dot on there. Grab a glue dot. On the end of the ribbon. Whoop. Stuck to my finger. It's not going to stick to the ribbon. Hold on. <clears throat> Let me get another one. One moment, please. Oh, come on, stick. Let me just sit this down there. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> and then you can like spread it out, you know. Ooh, and then it's just a matter of putting your two black eyes on here, whether it's a ghost or a mummy, you know. I did it like Janet did on hers because she put them off to the side. It just looks cute. Ooh. And then we're going to put this inside of the box with this designer paper. Oh, yeah, we got to stamp the designer paper. Remember, this is two and seven eighths by five and a quarter. We're going to stamp the Happy Halloween on the top sky part with the Memento ink. Just stamp Happy Halloween there. This is also from the Bag of Bones stamp set. <clears throat> okay then you can just you don't have to seal this you could actually probably use liquid glue but i'm just going to put a couple strips of the adhesive on the back and then just drop this inside of the box it's just gonna sit in there and just tap it down in there so they get a little message in there Ooh, it's got the tunes in there isn't it cute and you're gonna put your mummy in there <laughs> and then remember I like to go left right over left let me see if it goes like this too yeah it goes both ways whatever you prefer I just like the right on the top okay then we're gonna take our belly band and I'm gonna put adhesive on one end I'm gonna put it with the bone side up Closing up the box, making sure it keeps that shape while we wrap the belly band. So I'm going to pinch it. And then going around the curves of the box, you're just going to pinch it. This might be kind of hard with two hands, but you can do it. And go around the next layer here, pinch that. 
You could probably score it, but I didn't take the time to measure out the scoring to go around. Go around the next one, pinch that, and bring it around here. But you don't really want it too tight, okay? So you want to be able to slide this off. Mine might be a little bit too tight. Let me see if I can loosen it up a little bit. Maybe not. Yeah, I can. Just back it up a little bit. Backing up that chuck wagon. All right. All right, now I'm going to add a little bit more of adhesive over here. Now remember, the whole front is going to be decorated anyway. And plus, we're going to put dimensionals on that. So where's my big black dimensionals right here? Okay, so we're going to put dimensionals along this edge over here just to kind of give it a little bit more security for the or secured down for the belly band and now we're going to build our scene here we're going to put our skeleton onto the smoky slate tomb right over here it looks so friendly and then this little tombstone is going to go over to the right hand side of him under his like his knee area maybe right about let me see right about there i guess looks good okay and then we're going to take our fence i want to use liquid blue for that So the fence, we're just going to glue probably a quarter of the fence. Ooh, that come out really fast. Don't need a lot. Quarter to a half of the fence because the other half is going to hang over. We're going to put this going across the leg down here. Remember, this is the glow in the dark paper. Isn't that cute? And then we're going to pop our little kitty cat. Let me see. Maybe mini dimensional on the kitty. Black dimensionals work perfect with this. Put that over the fence. Ooh, don't set that down yet. Okay, and then we got to put our moon on. Where's my moon? I keep losing my moon. There it is. <laughs> All right, let's put some adhesive on the back of the moon. Or on the front of the moon, we're going to stick it to the back side. Over here. Okay? And then I've already got my dimensionals on my tombstone. So then this is going to go over the belly band. Just like that. Press that down. Perfect. Hopefully I didn't put... No, nope, that's good. So then the belly band should slide off. Yep, just like that. Slide it off. And then you got your mummy inside. Is it spooky or what? <laughs> so cute. So, so cute. Let's see how this goes on. Oh yeah, it goes on pretty good. Yeah, so make sure you're keeping the belly band not so tight. But see how the bats add like a decoration to the whole gravestone kind of a thing? Or, yeah, cemetery thing. That's it! Isn't it cute? All right. Do you guys have any questions about that little box? It's so adorable. All right, and then, look, I also got some of these Kit Kats. They got the skeleton candy on them, too. So I grabbed three of them. Hold on. I grabbed three of them to see if three would fit in here. Oh, I got this one already open here. So we've seen that the peanut butter and crackers fit. The Nutty Buddies. Yeah, you can put a lot of candy in here. But these are cute because they got the skeleton. You can probably put more of these in here. I got these at CVS. Aren't they cute? So, so cute. All right, let me put this one on. 
I did get some happy mail from you guys. We'll go through that here in a second. Wasn't it a cute shape box? Thank you, Janet. I love it. So cute. I love the shape of it. So it's a cute little boo box, right? But yeah, a lot of candy. And then here's Janet's again. Let me show you hers. Hers uses the starry sky and the glow-in-the-dark moon. And then she stamped her skeleton with the starry sky and the cat with the pumpkin. And then she added a top hat and a bow tie. So those are the boxes. Adorable. All right, let me get my, I got to open this card here. I got, um, so when we went away, we put our mail on hold, you know. So then when our mailman came over on yesterday, because we weren't supposed to be home until Tuesday, but um, he brought up to our porch. He didn't put it all in the mailbox, which was what I was thinking. Oh, this is so pretty. They, um, he just walked it up to the car. Carol, I got Carol Schaefer. I got your beautiful card. Sending a note of thanks. Ooh, it's so pretty. I want to thank you so much for the 2022 through 24 in color pearls. I've had them on my wish list. So happy I won them from the early bird on your live last Wednesday. Now, mind you, I've had these cards probably for the last two weeks in my thing. So I've been watching you for years and love everything you make. You give such great directions. Thank you, Carol. All right, let me show you these other cards. Let's move these boxes out of the way. And then I'll show you what I got from um, Stampin' Up! at Leadership. You've probably already seen them all over the internet and stuff, but... Okay, this card is from you, Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. I love it. Isn't that pretty the way it sits up? Ooh, I love it. I love the colors too. So pretty. And she's just sending me a thank you for all that you do. You're amazing. Hope you enjoy your road trip. Thank you, Nicole. I sure did. You know, the funny part of it is I, I told Richard I could drive, but he, but he insisted on driving. So I was kind of glad. He took the wheel, and I enjoyed the ride. And then this card is from Andrea. Thanks for brightening my day. Oh, thank you, Andrea. So pretty with the pineapple. Look at the, the blending on that. Isn't it pretty? Okay, so I kept the envelope with them. So that was Andrea. Andrea. And then this card is from Linda. Thank you. Thanks for all you do to add fun to my card making. I love Wednesday afternoon in the glitter pit. And when I can't make it, I'm so glad for the replay. Thanks for your stamp. Thanks for the stamp set I won when you picked my name. Also the host gift that came with my order. Take care. Love, Linda. Thank you, Linda. Look, this is a really cute pocket card. So I think I'm done. I got one more pillow gift, but I think I'm done with four of the pillow gifts. I got five total pillow gifts. I'm working on the last one, I think. So, but that made me think of it because one of the one of the pillow gifts is a pocket card, but it's not like that. It's totally different. It's so awesome. Okay, so this is from Rita. Oh, Rita, look at your card. How pretty. Woo! I love it. And we were supposed to meet in Vegas because she lives in Vegas. And we didn't. You know, chances and the stars didn't align. But we always said there's next time. Right, Rita? Thank you for your beautiful card. And then this card is from Rebecca. She's a glitter queen. Thank you, Rebecca. She's thanking me for the enamel dots that she won. And that she said, yours and Richard's trip looks awesome. Thank you, Rebecca. I love it. This really cute card with the owl. Look at the sparkle on his party hat and his bow tie. <laughs> Pia, this is from you. Thanks for this glitter spinner gift of the pastel gems. Also, thanks for um, sharing your creative talents with us. You're an inspiration. Ha happy you've been able to to oh to tour this beautiful country with your sweet hubby 
Thank you, Pia. I It was amazing. I felt, you know, everything we seen and did, it, it just kept getting bigger and bigger and better and better. I felt like the, the most... The most impressive thing I think I did and seen was right off the bat was the Mount Rushmore. It gave me goosebumps when I seen it. And then um, seeing the buffalo when we went through the Badlands. It was, oh, it was just amazing. And then we stayed in a hotel in Deadwood that Richard was all geeked out because some mayor or something, it was his hotel and it was like haunted. Of course it was haunted. <laughs> But yeah, so I just felt like everything was getting better and better as we went. And then of course, we ended up staying in Vegas for a few days because of the back um, backstage. But Stampin' Up! took us, and I'm going to totally butcher this name, but they took us to the, um, what is it? Circus de, so Cir Cir de Soleil. And it was to the Beatles Love. We have never, ever been to that show, ever. I mean, we've seen, like, short shows like that on cruise ships and stuff, but we never actually been to a Cirque du, du Soleil show, if I'm saying that right. You guys know what I'm talking about. But let me just tell you, there was so much action going on. Richard even said, we should go back and see this again, because it was just like people were like doing trampolines, roller skating, skateboarding, jumping up and down, coming from the ceiling, coming up from the floor. It was just like, and it was all set to the Beatles music. It was, it was amazing. But then we seen the price of the tickets and we thought, well, we're not going to come back here anytime soon. <laughs> it was so expensive. It was like $172 a ticket. And Stampin' Up! paid for all of us to go. Wow, that was like a humongous treat, and we were all so excited. So this card is from Phyllis. Thank you, Phyllis, for your beautiful card. Leaping for joy is easy to do when I have a friend as amazing as you. Thank you. Aw, oh, Phyllis, that's so sweet. Thank you. And then last but not least, this beautiful card is from Renee. And it says, seeing pictures of you two, I still see newlyweds. <laughs> here's to the, here's to another 35. Thank you, Renee. I'll give you some money later. <laughs> That's funny. But yes, we celebrated our 35th, 35th wedding anniversary on August 31st, which is also my father-in-law's birthday. And you guys remember the card we made last week with the chickens? That was his birthday card. So, oh, and I did videotape Richard opening up his card, but I got to tell you, I don't think I told everybody last week, but I totally forgot to bring the cards with me. They're down here in my office, and I was trying to keep them hidden from him, and I hit them so good I totally forgot because I came downstairs right before we left to turn everything off, you know, my heater or my whatever. I just turn off my computer and stuff. And I totally forgot to grab his card. So we went the whole trip of me just telling him how awesome the card was. So I did videotape him, but I, I couldn't bring it over here to show you guys. So maybe I'll share it on Facebook or something with you guys so you can see his reaction. And, you know, him opening up the card. But, of course, he was trying to figure it out. And then um, I just sent out his dad's birthday card yesterday. So he's going to get it here in a couple days, but he's going to... He's going to love it, too. He's like Richard, or Richard's like him. He's wanting to figure it all out, you know? All right, I think that's it. Do you guys want to do the catalog really quick? Do we have time? It's not even an hour yet. Do you guys want to do the catalog at all? You want to go through it? I'm so glad you had a great time. Thank you. Thank you, Ramona. Yeah, it was so, so awesome. No car problems, no motorcycle problems, no trailer problems. It was a smooth, smooth trip, except for a couple road constructions in Chicago. But we came back another way because we went up through, um, uh, I think we went up through Chicago and then a little bit into Wisconsin and stuff. And then we cut over to South Dakota. I don't quite know, but we went north. And then when we came home, so we went up to South Dakota, then we went through Wyoming. Let me tell you, Wyoming is like desert, and it was so hot. 
So then we went, I'm trying to remember everything we went. We went to the Grand Canyon. That was another highlight too. I'd never been to the Grand Canyon. Went to the Grand Canyon. That was amazing. Then we went to the Hoover Dam. Then we went to, I'm just trying to picture. Oh, we went to the Under London Bridge in Arizona, I think it is. And it was like 116 there. Woo! This Michigan body is not used to that hot weather. And then um, that was all after Las Vegas. So then after Las Vegas, we went over to Arizona, went to the Grand Canyon. We did all that. Then we came to New Mexico. We went to the church that we were talking about, the healing dirt that I wear on my neck. We got a bag of healing dirt. We got a bottle of holy water. And we just like toured the whole grounds of that sacred church area there in, in New Mexico. And let me tell you, it was off the beaten path. But once you got there, it was like amazing that this, this whole place is like in the forest. It was just amazing and so then we we stayed there for a little bit and then um after that then we got on route 66 we definitely wanted to hit winslow arizona because of the eagle song i'm a big eagles fan um, i just love music in general but eagles you know that easy on or take it easy um, that whole song is on this corner of winslow arizona they have the flatbed ford they have the Take It Easy with the wings. They have the Winslow, Arizona on the corner with the street sign. Then they have the statue of Glenn Fry. It, it was that whole corner. And then while you're walking to all the gift stores, they're all on the corners. The music is blaring with the Eagles with that song. It was just amazing, amazing time. So then we just drove down Route 66, seen a bunch of landmarks. We got to go to Cadillac. What is that? Cadillac Ranch? Woo! That was a highlight, too, where we got to see the Cadillacs that have been spray-painted on since the 1970s. I got a couple pictures on my Facebook page that um, Richard was showing you how thick. And you guys know, like, when you spray paint, like, from a can, a spray paint can, it's just a light mist. But these Cadillacs had like layers, like probably at least a foot or more of just layers and layers of spray paint. And so Richard climbed up into one of the Cadillacs and he put his head through it and he could see like down in like the, the, um, the hood. Because the Cadillacs are, I think they're hood down in the ground. And there's a whole story. If you want to Google it, I mean, I think I posted it even on Facebook. But it was amazing, the story and how that even came to be. But um, definitely, I felt like I was living a history moment for two weeks. It was just like so many things that we got to experience. Oh, and then I seen the cars, you know, Tomater. <laughs> I got to see him. I got to see, um, what else did we get to see? We got to see so much. It was just amazing. Yeah, and I felt like every time before our trip, Richard would come home, he said, oh, we're going to go here. And I'm like, listen, is this like a bucket list that I'm going to like die after all this because you're trying to cram everything into two weeks? But he was like, no, I just, since we're out there, we might as well go to it. And I'm like, all right, we'll do it. So we did as much as we could cram in for two weeks, and then we still came back early. Which worked out perfect so we can go help Jesse and Nick move in. And I feel like um, it's not so much that we're... I mean, Richard's really doing a lot of work over there with the electrical. Because Richard is an electrician. So, um, me, I'm just more of like helping, you know, with Griffey. You know, keeping him because he's a rambunctious little boy. He just like takes off running and... <laughs> And he's always wanting mommy. So it's just like mommy can't paint if he, she's holding Griffey. So it was just more of like helping Jesse. And then Richard was doing the electrical and stuff. So um, we're going to be going back over there this weekend. So I told Richard, I said, we can't go over there very much this month because we got to really start cracking on my retreat stuff. Because we got to cut all the cards and get everything ready. Um but I'm so excited. I'm going to share everything with you guys. I'm going to do videos and stuff so we can, um, so you guys can see what I did, but it's got to be after the retreat. And then also the to-go packet will have 
the the ten make and takes, which um, one, two, three, four, five, six, set one, two, three, four, five, six cards are right there behind me, that are part of the the ten cards that we're making at the retreat, and then um, you also get a little um, pillow gift, kind of what we're calling a pillow gift slash table gift with your um, to go packet. Okay, so all that will be. Um, more details on how you can prepay for that in the upcoming week. So if you're interested, just stay tuned. We can do a, I'm, I just don't want to do it too early out because I don't want to just hold your money and then, you know, I want to make sure that we have enough product too because Lord knows, I don't want anything going on back order. Okay. Sounds like you had a great trip. It was amazing. And so many people at backstage were following us too. They were like, oh my gosh, you rode your motorcycle this whole way. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> we didn't ride the motorcycle the whole way. That was the whole reason why we bought the trailer. You guys remember the story, right? So Richard and I bought a, 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 a hauling trailer to put the motorcycle in the trailer. So um, there's pictures on my blog from, you know, when we did that a few months ago. But um, the whole reason was because Richard has been out to the South Dakota, Wyoming, and it gets so windy out there that we've, we've lost probably two or three riders on the Hokahe. They died on that road in Wyoming and South Dakota and stuff because the winds are so strong. And with me being on the bike and Richard on the bike, you know, Richard's got to, you know, do all the handling of the bike, let alone worried about me and stuff. So he always said that if he got a trailer, he'd want to take me out west. So that was the whole plan. So, and we plan on going back, but we plan on going to like just one location. We really, really, really want to go back to South Dakota because there was so much that we didn't get to do and see. I mean, we've seen the Badlands, we've seen the Custard Park, we've seen the Deadwood, but we didn't get to go to Sturgis. We, you know, there was like a handful of parks that we didn't actually go to. So, oh, and then when we were in um, St. George, Utah, we went to Mount Zion. Now, I have gone to Founder Circle with Stampin' Up! many years, and everybody would go to Mount Zion, but I didn't go because I wasn't into the hiking, you know? So, but Richard said, we got to go to Mount Zion because it's beautiful. So we went to Mount Zion and as we ride up on the motorcycle, now let me tell you, if you've ever been to Mount Zion, you got to go on a motorcycle or even a, a bicycle because ugh, it was amazing on a motorcycle. It's beautiful, I'm sure, in a car, but you can't really take in all the beauty of that park uh, in a car. Especially if you're like in a, like what motorcycle riders call a car is a cage because you're caged in there, right? And a motorcycle, you're seeing everything above you, below you. And one thing Richard and I notice is that in the Mount Zion Park, it's so clean that Richard and I both said that it looks like they took like a duster and they dusted the curbs. That's how clean it is there at Mount Zion. It's so beautiful and a lot of twisty roads. But um, anyway, so we drove up to go into Mount Zion. And, you know, we've been paying for these parks all along. And this sweet lady was the ranger there. And she was getting us ready to go through the park. And she said, are you a veteran, sir? And I got out my credit card and I was going to pay, you know, it was 30 bucks for the motorcycle to go through Mount Zion. And she said... Oh, here, darling, take your card back. She says, I got a little surprise for you. She said, is your husband, are you a veteran? And I said, well, Richard's a veteran. And she said, well, just fill this paper out and sign the back. And she said, and I don't think I'm going to need your credit card back. And so I'm like wondering what in the world is going on. So apparently Richard, with him being a veteran, he gets to go into all the natural parks for free or national parks for free as a veteran. So... That was the first we've ever heard of it. And how exciting was that? So we got to go to the Grand Canyon and Mount Zion. And then he future parks for the rest of his life for free. As long as I'm with him, I get to go in for free. So exciting. So I was like all emotional. I was just like, Richard's like, I would, if I wasn't on this bike, I would get off and hug you. So we were like fist bumping her and stuff through the window. It was so awesome. It was beautiful. Uh, it was just. 
uh, everything about our trip was perfect. It couldn't have been any more perfect. We absolutely loved it. Oh, yeah, we went through the Needles Highway and we went out to Needles, California. So it was like we did. We, we got to see two London bridges. I know there was a story behind the one in Arizona. It's not as pretty as the one in London that we got to see when we went to um, the UK for the Norway trip this year. But we did get to see two London bridges and we got to go to two Needles. Needles Highway in Needles, California. I thought that was pretty cool. So, but we didn't go all the way down to Santa Monica Pier for the Route 66. That was just too far. We didn't want to venture out like another 10 or 12 hours. I'm telling you, you rethink stuff because like Richard says, when you're going out, you got to think, you got to come back. <laughs> so, let's say you're going three hours out, but you got another three hours to get back on track. So, you're out six hours. So there was many times that, because we wanted to go to Yellowstone Park. That was the only park that was on our list that we didn't get to go to because it was 10 hours out of the way. Five hours there, five hours back. And by this time, we were kind of getting stir crazy in the car. I was just like, let's not do that. Let's just do that another time. <laughs> he agreed. So, but our next trip, whenever we go out with the motorcycle and the trailer, we're going to go to South Dakota so beautiful out there oh my goodness i know yeah mount zion oh and then have you guys been there it's so awesome because you know like i said on the motorcycle like when we're going around this one curve i looked up and in the the um the canyon or whatever there was these two big holes that I could see anyway, like two like big black holes. Well, apparently as we winded around, that ended up being a tunnel that when we went through was like pitch black. But then when you got by it, you looked through the window that I was looking up at when I was on the bike, looking up and then we looked down. It was so weird. It was awesome. It was beautiful. But, um... Yeah, I don't know if you guys see all that when you're in a car like I did on a motorcycle. Ugh, it was just beautiful. And so then we collected patches and stuff as we went because we both wear vests when we're riding. So we got all these patches from everywhere. I feel like the patches are so much better than t-shirts because Richard's got probably, I think we said about 200 shirts. And how many shirts can you wear? I'm talking about Harley Davidson shirts. I mean, there's certain ones that you want, like when you go overseas, like to London or Fiji or Thailand or and stuff. But I mean, just getting into getting a T-shirt at every single Harley Davidson in every state is really pricey because you're talking at least forty two to sixty five dollars, depending on the shirt. But now people are buying more in the patches. So now they're jacking up the prices in the patches. They used to be like five bucks. Now they're up to $12. But they're still cheaper than a t-shirt and we can still put them on our vest. But Richard's got like three vests that he's got. And um, I think he should start putting his patches on a pair of uh, chaps. That's my opinion. Because he's got a lot of patches. And he wears his chaps, you know. So I thought that would pretty, that would be pretty cool. Have his vest and then his chaps all patched out. I thought that would be pretty cool. But anyway, did we want to do the catalog or what do you want to do? Do you want me to let you go? Your husband's bucket list is the Grand Canyon. You know, there's different places you can go to the Grand Canyon because it's so enormous. Please do a Google search on the Grand Canyon. That in itself is another history lesson. It is amazing, this this planet we live on. It's so amazing. But the Grand Canyon is like um, growing every day because of the river, you know. It washes away the, the canyon, so it's expanding, getting bigger, getting deeper. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always growing. So it's not like, you know, it could be look totally different next year when you go see it, but I think we went to the south rim of the Grand Canyon. Any part of the Grand Canyon you go to is going to be breathtaking. It's so beautiful. 
Yeah, my vest is really awesome, too. I like it. I got the, the cutesy patches. I got a lips one up here. I think it's up here, up here. And then, I, I don't know. I just like certain patches on mine. But he, you know, you like what you like, right? Okay. Yeah, we went through the Needles Highway. That was awesome, too. But let me tell you, it took us like almost two hours to get up there because of the traffic. But we were on the bike, too. It didn't matter, but still. And then, in Vegas, we um, we got there a day early. So, we wanted to go explore Las Vegas and stuff on the bike. So, we went down to... This is when I said that we went to that Ghost Adventures, Zach Bagan's um, Haunted Museum. But it wasn't haunted. It might be haunted, but it wasn't there about ghosts. It's about, like, stuff. You know, like, haunted dolls and stuff. But, um... Anyway, that was the first time we went down the strip and that's when we seen the haunted house. Well, not the haunted house, but the haunted museum. And then we came out and the guys were escorting us out. He had an umbrella and I, and I was, my stomach sank and I'm like, oh no. Cause when we went in, it was like, um, quarter to six. And when we came out, it was like nine 30. It was like a good four hour tour through this museum and it was downpouring and I'm talking like flooding in the roads like when we went to I think it was 15 highway 15 or 215 we couldn't even go under the underpass because the cars were stalled in the water it was so bad I, I really thinking back on that I don't even know how we got home because we weren't dressed for the rain we didn't have our rain gear it was nice and hot, though, still at 930 in Las Vegas. But it was raining. It was downpouring. And it was cars were going by us so fast, splashing us. So we didn't end up getting getting to go down to the strip that night. Then the other night we had a free night. We went back down and we got rained on again. <laughs> the same thing. It flooded. We went down to Old Strip. Old Town Strip, I think it is. And we got caught in the rain and it downpoured again. We even looked at the weather and we we're thinking it was clear. But it, and then when we got back to the resort, it was totally sunny and everything. It didn't even rain there. It was so weird. So then we thought, well, we still want to go down and see the strip, even if it's at not at night. So we ended up going down in the morning before we ended up leaving the resort. So... We went down, had breakfast, then we got out, we went on the bike, and then we went down on the strip. We finally got to see it. So, we did get to see it, but third time was a charm. Rained out. Somebody had said that we missed the monsoon season or something somewhere. Is that the, the winds or something? We hit some pretty high, high strong winds too. Where did you park the trailer? We parked the trailer at the hotel. You know what's nice but in South Dakota too that we noticed that they're very friendly for motorcycle riders. Like like Las Vegas, they weren't very friendly with our trailer. We ended up parking at three different places at the resort because they just said it wasn't, you know, allowed to park up on the top on the parking garage. Then we moved it down to parking lot C. So, um, but South Dakota, everywhere you go, people are like, here, park your truck here, five bucks. Like, really? So we'd park, we'd pull over, park, and then we'd go get the bike out, and we'd ride for hours and hours and hours, come back. Okay, catalog. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I think that's because they got Sturgis down there. They know the motorcycle vibe, right? Most people, like, when you go to Vegas, you're not pulling a trailer, I mean, or a motorhome for that part. I mean, if you do, it's like you got a car or something, you know? Came in late. Did you discuss the last live video? Well, what about the last live video? We parked, or we, well, we towed the trailer wherever we went. And then when we want to go somewhere, like when we went to Hoover Dam... Or we went to the London Bridges or the Grand Canyon or Mount Zion. We just take the bike out and go. We just leave our car at the hotel with the trailer. You know? 
This isn't a, a toy haul. I mean, it's a toy hauler, but it's not like a mobile home or a fifth wheeler. It's just a box trailer. I think Richard said it's a 16 footer. So he can put both of his motorcycles in it. But yeah, we just parked it with our truck. Your vest has a lot of patches too, Norelda said. Yes, I love my vest. Yellowstone is next time. Yes, Nancy. Definitely want to go to Yellowstone. Definitely. Um, what was that about the last video? Um, it was so funny because we would drive until, I, I think the first night we drove 13 hours. We pretty much got to South Dakota in one day. Maybe with a few hours to spare. But we drove like 13. 13 and a half hours straight like it was but we left early early we left like at four o'clock in the morning too so that did make a difference okay so let me switch out my um can you guys see this all right do you guys want to do the catalog let's just go through it really quick i've only got 10 percent. let me unplug my phone hold on let me it's going to be a loud clunk with the mic sorry guys Gotta plug in my battery. <laughs> okay. There. We're charging. All right. Good, good, good. All right. So, if you guys got some time, we can hang out. If you guys got any more questions about my trip, I can surely answer you. I want to know what who said that about the last live video. What was I supposed to talk about the last live video? Oh, thank you for the anniversary wishes. Did you discuss? Yeah, there it is. Who said that? Nancy, did you discuss the last live video? I don't know what that means. What are you asking, Nancy? And then I think I answered that. Where did we park? How we were all trying to get your attention on the last video. Huh? When, oh, that was like two weeks ago or last week's video. Yes, Diana, Mount Zion is beautiful. And then that one picture Richard and I got at the Badlands, Richard and I, I was sitting on the bike, Richard got off and he took a picture of me with the buffalo and it was looked like he was photobombing us. <laughs> I swear, I was trying to bring over some of those pictures so I can show you guys. Oh, I've been years since I've been to Vegas, but I thought Circus Circus was trailer mobile home friendly. Oh, maybe they are. I don't know. But we ended up, um, Stampin' Up! had the backstage at the Red Rock Resort, which was off. It's about a half hour, 45 minutes from the Strip. It was a beautiful resort. Very, you know what? This is my only complaint with that resort. It was very expensive to stay there. Like over $200 a night. I'd say $270 a night. But they didn't have a microwave. They didn't have a coffee pot. And they didn't have an ice. Um, an ice. Um, oh yeah, they did have ice. What else did they, they didn't have? A microwave, a coffee pot. There was something else they didn't have. And it was like so weird. And this fancy schmancy hotel. They didn't have it. Oh, that's what it was. They had the refrigerator, but it was jam-packed with alcohol, drinks, Snickers, candy bars, Reese's peanut butter candy bars. I mean, that refrigerator was packed solid. And supposedly, when the guy brought our luggage up to the room, he said, do not move anything from the refrigerator and don't put anything in it. And then the same, the same goes for the snacks on the dresser. Apparently, everything was weighted out, where if you took anything out, within, I'm not kidding, within 15 seconds, your credit card was billed. 
And then our friends, Patty, you know, Patty and Paul, Patty was there and she put her leftovers in the refrigerator, kind of squeezed it in. I don't even know how she got it in the refrigerator because they had it so jam packed. You couldn't even put our own water in there. Thank goodness Richard and I brought our cooler. So we brought our cooler up every night to the hotel and we had our water and we brought um, cold cuts and cheese and stuff. So, um, but thank goodness we did because in the refrigerator in that hotel, you couldn't put anything in the refrigerator. So anyway, my friend Patty, she put her leftovers because we all went to dinner that night, brought home her leftovers and put it in the refrigerator and she was charged the next day $25 on her credit card for putting something in the refrigerator. Isn't that weird? I think that's like so weird. And I'm not normally, a, I mean, I like my coffee, my coffee pot, but I'm not normally one to drink coffee at a hotel, but Richard is. And, but they didn't have a coffee pot. They didn't have um, a microwave, nothing. I just thought that was weird. And maybe that's Las Vegas. Maybe they just don't do that because everything costs money. Isn't it weird me opening up this catalog now? <laughs> I say that every time when we get a new catalog. Don't forget this paper right here is in the paper share. Like I said, I got all the paper share ordered except for the two. And I'll show you the two that we, we got to wait on. So it might be a little delay. But I did get all the other paper ordered. So we're going to start working on that as soon as I get it. So, But this paper right here is really nice. It's um, a walk in the forest. And it's a making the difference. So they're going to donate $3 to support an organization dedicated to spreading cheer and providing support to those in need. So when you buy this paper, you donate $3. Stampin' Up! will do that. So we're just going to go through this really quick. Believe it or not, I don't have everything. I would like it, but yeah, like you guys, I know how it feels. I do. <laughs> So this is the Mary and Bright bundle. It's got the Christmas lights, you know, the twinkling. And then I like it because of the greetings, they're word blocks where I can cut them out easy. You guys know I like to separate my words, but that's like perfect for that. And this paper is so pretty. Mary Bold and Bright, 12 by 12. They have foil paper, Melon Mambo and Granny Apple Green. The St. Nicholas bundle. Uh, what is this one? The Merriest Trees. I couldn't tell you what's on back order now. But I know the, the Bag of Bones dies are on back order. And a couple of the designer papers. This, the Festive and Fun. Very cute. Okay, this is one of the papers, I believe is the shining brightly is the one that was on back order i couldn't get is it i think it is shining brightly and then the oh holy night it might be one of those this set is so pretty the manger very cursive set over here night divine where are the paper gift bags sold that are shown on page 13 and 25? All right, let me get there. Hold on. 13. Oh, those are in the annual catalog. I think. And then they added the stripes to it, I think. Because those looks like the end color bags. I'll look at the one on page 25, you said? I'll look on page 25. So this is one of the bundles that's going to be presented at our retreat. This bundle right here. S Stars at night. This is cute. Rocking horse. Can you see it okay? We have shop the town. Looks like a little village. Forever forest. Love the dots. <laughs> Joy to you is a nice, bold greeting. Also, this ornament set is gorgeous. 
the really cute Berry Christmas with the polar bear and that's punch stamp set. Cute festive designer paper and a creative, um, not creative, but uh, memories and more card kit and envelopes. And this ribbon is so pretty, it's sparkly. This is the balmy blue sparkle ribbon. It is pretty too. If you guys need a catalog, just reach out to me. I can send you one, okay? Oh, this one right here. Yeah, these are the end color envelopes. They are, uh, I don't have the annual catalog over here, but they are in the annual catalog. Whoever asked me that. Okay, so here's the very cute up close. And then this set's really cute. Gift of giving. Adorable. Winter owls. Fragrant forest and graceful deer. I think these are more like background stamps. Very pretty. Did you guys see my thank you notes for um, September? I'm using the autumn leaf stamp set and those are distinctive too. When you get the thank you notes, you can see like the definition, like lighter, darker, it's so pretty. And it does it naturally, the stamp, the way it's made. Joy of Christmas. Very pretty set, lots of gold. You know what, maybe it's this paper. <laughs> I don't remember which one. You guys know which one's on back order? Uh, love this Noel. Love this filigree right here with the season's greeting and the die. Christmas classics. Cute little gingerbread man. This is the season's cheer or season, sending cheer bundle. And the dies. And then you have Christmas tidings embossing folder, which is nice. It's got all the seasonal words like love, reindeer, Santa, festive, tree, decoration. Really cute embossing folder. Jolly words. Very cute. Radiant, radiant light. Pretty. Wishes all around bundle. It's like a wreath set. It looks like it's got three different wreaths in there in the die collection. I'm trying to remember which one of the Christmas papers is on back order. Because I know the holiday one for the fall with the pretty um, backgrounds, that one is definitely on back order. But it was with the, one of the Christmas ones. Winter Meadow. This is the suite from Winter Meadow. We got Winter Meadow designer paper. Beautiful. And this is the specialty Snowflake Magic 12 by 12. So pretty. These are beautiful colors. This is the Magical Meadow stamp set. Yes, email me your, um, who's wanting to know something, Teresa? Yeah, just email me if you want the catalog. I can drop it off in the mail for you. Okay? Just email me here. Email me here. Dawn at the glitterpit.com. Sing it, everybody. Dawn at the glitterpit.com. That's my email. You can reach me there, all right? Just email me. And then also when you're requesting a catalog, put, put your address down so I know where to mail it to. And then we got snowflakes, sparkling snowflakes. And this is also with the punch. Uh, above it all is a, what is this? A gondola or something that takes you in the snow scan? I don't know because I don't snow ski. Winter months are not my favorite. We like summer. We got the pine cones, precious pine cones. Oh, and then look at this cute little thing. It's a box, nested treat boxes. Isn't it cute? Very, very cute. You can also do like an advent calendar, put gifts in there and stuff. It would have to be really big though for 25 days, right? But it's a cute idea. All right, and then this is the paper that I know is on back order. 
This is another suite that we're using. Oh, let me show you the other suite that we're using at the as a presentation at my retreat. It was that Holy Night one and then the Winter Meadow right here. This is another suite we're using. And then this is the third suite we're using. So I need more of that paper for my retreat too and that ribbon. So pretty. So, but I'm still, I still got to get the paper shares for that too. So, but this is the stamp set I was telling you about that I'm using for my thank you notes. Look how pretty that is. It is that way, the stamp. You don't have to like um, generation stamp, you know, like ink it up, stamp off, and then stamp it. It's not like that. It's made to do it like that. It's so pretty. So my thank you notes this month use Pretty Peacock, Cajun Craze, Crush Curry, and Old Olive. So pretty. But it's that distinctive, that design. And then the Fruitful Blessings, beautiful, like a thin line design. Oh, I love that uh, masking right there. The Rustic Crate, I will tell you, this is a little deceiving. We all thought, meaning we as demonstrators, we thought this was going to make a crate. It does not make a crate. So don't think it's going to make you a like a little basket for like Thanksgiving. It's the image of like a crate. You know what I mean? So like this card shows you it looks like a crate on there, but it's just like the side. It, it's just, it's not three dimensional is what I'm trying to say. It's not like an actual crate you can make, which we thought it was. It's still cute, though. I got it. I love it. I love it with the images, the pumpkins and stuff. And then So Sincere. Very cute stamp set. We love this stamp set being in the holiday catalog because it's not so much holiday. It's just your really cute, like, sentiments that you can put inside cards. So it's a Million Dollar Achiever stamp set. Sandy Hancock. This was her Million Dollar stamp set. We all love it. Very, very cute. And then this is the Abundant Joy, or sorry, Abundant Beauty Decorative Mask. So pretty. Look at that sunflower. We'll make that one, one Wednesday. You guys, it's so pretty. I love it. And then it's just, just with the blending brushes and your ink and the mask. And you build it, you know. Do this step first, that step second. And then this is the, the fourth bundle that we're going to use or play with or watch the presentation at our retreat is the bag of bones so cute the glow in the dark paper the glow in the dark bats and ghost one of my make and takes is using this paper along with the ghost it's so cute look at the cowboy here <laughs> he's got the cowboy boots and the cowboy hat cracks me up and then this one's got the top hat and the cane and bow tie. <laughs> now, what would be cute is if you could build the, the skeletons and, like, put them on a brad. And his legs could go all, like, and his arms could go all wobbly. <laughs> that would be funny. So cute. All right. And then this is the tricks and treats. This is the little pouch with the candy corn. Isn't that cute? So adorable. Love it. I like the haunted house too. And then the pick a patch. Cute little pumpkin with the pumpkin punch. Very cute. Then this is not your traditional like seasonal. But it's nice that they threw it in here. Because there's a lot of people that don't celebrate the holidays. And they still like to make cards, you know, for birthdays and stuff. So this is nice. Modern garden and also has designer paper now this designer paper is different than we've ever had before meaning there's not like equal amount of sheets there's six each of eight instead of eight you know what i mean so you can see there's eight but there's only six yeah it's very confusing when you're doing paper shares that's like you want the numbers to be even when you're dividing everything out this is just like weird and then a lot of the specialty paper is not double-sided i hope you guys seen that yeah because it's not double-sided so this is the modern garden 
more wishes, which is your nice, bold, seasonal greetings. Beautiful. This is the translucent florals. It's another one of those distinctive inks or distinctive stamp sets. The way it's made, it gives you the highlight and low light and all that. I love it. Then this one is matching the, um, the coordinates with the ink and tile punch pack. That stamp set that's in the annual catalog, this coordinates with that stamp set and punch too, which is nice. Light the Sky Bundle, fireworks, 4th of July, could be for graduation, could be for birthday too, yep. Oh, and then let's not forget, we got to add more people stamps. <laughs> Always with me, even though these ones are really cute. Always with me. Yeah, it's really cute. It's like mom and her daughters, it looks like. Very cute. And then we have the whale watching. Like a scene builder with whales and ocean. And yeah, it's pretty. Then throughout the year, lots of greetings for the holidays, Easter, birthday, New Year, trick or treat, best of luck for St. Patty's Day, Valentine's Day. Don't forget to look up in the thing too. I really haven't been looking there, but there's embossing folders up here too. This is the Cherry Patterns embossing folder. Year to celebrate, birthday, New Year's. Yep, that can cover all those kind of things too. Cheers to the Seasons. This is another distinctive stamp. Look how it's, oh, this is beautiful. Tis the season. When you stamp that with one ink, it's going to make it look like you're using like different shades of that color. It's beautiful. And then look, this is like one of the best things ever is the deckled circle dies. There are how many dies in here? 14 circle dies. Woohoo! That is awesome. So we get our all our circle dies back. And they are huge. It goes all the way up to the largest die is five and three fourths. That is a nice size circle. Very, very awesome. Then the curved occasions. This is with the bundle with the punch. Look at the roller skate. You know, I was a roller skating champion in my day. No lie. Went to regionals. I think I took third, second, second place a couple times. But yeah, I was a roller skater back in the day. Very cute. And then this is the warm, warmest heart dies and warmest heart stamp set with the thorn with the thermos and then you can decorate the thermos very retro i think with the skate and the disco ball and stuff and that's it and then don't forget to look at the index in the back of the catalog because there's more samples that you guys can get inspired from look at that one <laughs> we got the wee wee the french skeleton back there with his little hat and his little mustache <laughs> is that mustache in there in that die, or did they draw it on? I think they drew it on him. <laughs> it's funny. All right, that's the catalog in a nutshell. Really quick and lickety split. Geralda, I hope so too. I don't know why, what's going on. I feel like every site I go to, they're always asking me to change my password. I feel like something's going on everywhere. Not just with Stampin' Up. I feel like just the world in general. I feel like, and then I got kicked out when I was on the road on my Instagram account. And then my friend Patty, she was like, what, did, what happened? Did you get hacked? I'm like, no. I said, it's just asking me to change my password. And I didn't want to do it on my phone because I want, you know, I got fat fingers. I didn't want to do everything on my phone. So I know the deckled circles are awesome, Ramona. Woo! I'm so excited about them. 14 dies. I know, Matthew, it's huge. So um, 
Anyway, so my Instagram account is back up and I'm taking a, a social media class right now that Stampin' Up! is offering all of us demonstrators. So I'm hoping to get better at social media, just like another thing I got to learn. But I'm really excited. Our day one starts tomorrow. So who knows what I'm going to be posting on Facebook. <laughs> you guys are all my guinea pigs. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. We're learning. We're learning all the ins and outs on Facebook and social media in general. So I'm going to be tackling Instagram and Facebook. Facebook, my business page. So I think most of you guys are on my business page, right? So if you're not, look up Dawn Stamping Thoughts on Facebook. And then you can just like my page and you can follow me there. And you can get all my updates. Better yet, you can subscribe to my newsletter. You can go to my blog and subscribe there. Get my blog feed to your thing so you won't miss a post, won't miss a thing. I know. I That was the first die I had to get and open up with my team because I wanted to make sure there was actually 14. There is a lot of circle dies in that die collection. It's awesome. Oh, you did. Oh, Diana, really? Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry, you guys. I thought Stampin' Up's phone thing was getting better. At least they said it was at backstage that they weren't really, oh, this is what it was. They weren't putting everybody on definitely calling you back. You can wait and or call you back, I think. But who knows? I do too, Ramona. The circles are awesome. I remember when we used to have the, the framelits. Remember the circle framelits? I used to make so many things out of them circles like a cookie monster card. I think there's a video on my YouTube channel that shows you how to make a cookie monster card. It was so cute. But see, the circles we have now are, I mean, they're not little. I mean, a three-inch circle is a pretty good-sized circle, but it's not big enough for a cookie monster, you know, in blue cardstock. So, but now we can do it. And that's so good for Griffy, because Griffy likes some characters now. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm so sorry, Diana. Thank you for sharing, Anna. <laughs> really, Nicole? All right. I didn't know that. Where did you go? Nicole said she uses Instagram more than Facebook. She just keeps Facebook to follow me on my videos. <laughs> Is that, Nicole, where did you go? Who? Maybe it wasn't Nicole that said that. Hold on, let me scroll back. I don't know where it went. All right. Oh. All right, everybody. Thank you all for enjoying my trip with me and Richard. We had an amazing time and it was just nice to get away with just me and him. And like I kept telling everybody, it was like a real, real, real vacation for me. Because I didn't have to do no driving, no nothing. I just sat and like, I was like, um, what do you call it? I was, um, the, what do you do when, you, when you're the, doing the map and stuff? Even though we put, uh, Google Maps on when we were driving through the truck. But, um, you know, what was that? I know a shotgun, but it was something that I'd say I'd get in the car and he would get tired and stuff or his butt would hurt and his back would hurt. I said, you sure you don't want me to drive? Are you sure you don't want me to drive? <laughs> He's like, I'm sure. And I'm like, oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> he knew I was nervous about driving that trailer, even though I could do it. I really seriously could drive. I love driving his big truck. His big truck is really awesome to drive. And I know I could have handled the trailer. But what it was is the construction. Because they got you on these really narrow roads. And then they got the, you know, the pylons there. And then trucks going right next to you. Just makes me a little nervous. But I could have done it. 
if it was during the daytime, I would have felt more better at, in the daytime. But um, he knows. Oh, yeah, the navigator. Yeah, that would have been my name. I could have been the nav. Yeah, I was the navigator. <laughs> um, the co-pilot. Yeah, that's a good one, too. So, um, but he, he knew I was nervous. So, and I said, but if you, if you absolutely have to have me drive, I will. No doubt about it. But he drove the whole way. So, it's all good. All right, guys. So, we'll be here next week. I have no idea what I'm making. Just come and be surprised right along with me. <laughs> right? Also, get on my Facebook page, my Instagram account, follow me on my blog, subscribe to my newsletter so you don't miss what's going on. A lot's going to be happening in the next month or so. I mean, you don't want to miss any of it. Oh, let me show you what we got in Las Vegas. It's so cute. Look at it. They gave us this cute little box of stuff. Why is my phone not? Oh, that should be charging, no? Maybe that's dead now. Hold on. Look at my big external battery here. I think that's dead now. Okay, so I'm down to 9%. Let me open this really quick. I want to show you it because it's really cute. So the, in our bag that we got, so um, we got this cute little box of goodies in here. These were in a little bag. They're like stickers, but they're like felt. They're so awesome, but they're stickers. So, but I could sew, sew this on my vest, right? This is so a patch. But look at this one, Las Vegas. And then the arrow and the palm trees stamping up. And then the city skyline, Las Vegas. Yeah, so these were in a little bag and then I just shoved them in here, but this has got a little notebook right here or like a little post-it notes thing here. And then these reminded me of the beads that we got in New Orleans, but really they're like push pins. Aren't they cute? And then these I think are magnets. I think these are magnets. I didn't totally open it because I wanted to keep it nice to bring. Yeah, these are magnets. Aren't they nice? They're heavy too. So I got that, and then I got my backstage pin, and then I got some paper clips, and then in here were two pins, like writing pins, that were brightly colored like this. Isn't that a nice little package? And then in our bag, we got a big notebook that we took notes in, and like the schedule, the agenda, and stuff. So that was in our bag. So that's what we got. So cute. Oh, and then we got these glasses at the blackout night. We got a Stampin' Up! glass case. Isn't it nice? And then these, this, I, th I feel like the glasses were like um, made to look like Sarah's glasses. They're not really my favorite. Do I look famous or something? <laughs> They're kind of cute. But, um, and then you got a cleaning cloth with Stampin' Up! on it. So uh, the girls, it was really cool. We got to go to this party down at the pool and the resort. And um, we got to go up to this wall that was like blacked out. And then all you seen were these hands. They had white gloves on and they had their hand out. And they were like waiting for you to give your ticket to them. And then you got a pair of glasses. They took the ticket and then they came back out and handed you the glasses. And then Richard... Since Richard's my supporting demonstrator, he got a pair. I like his better for me, just because of my face shape. His are the Risky Business, you know, the Tom Cruise Risky Business. Pretty nice. So they had women's and men's glasses. So Richard got them, but Richard wears prescription glasses. So he said, you can have mine too. So I'll have his and mine. But now, for a heads up, I'm going to be going to the eye doctor for the very first time in my whole life. I know, no judging. <laughs> my friend, she was like, I don't think I've ever met an over 50-year-old that's never had glasses. She said, don't you even wear um, readers? And I'm like, no, I've never needed any glasses. So, 
I guess it's time to go. I don't know. Richard's going to go get his eyes checked. And I said, well, maybe I should go get my eyes checked. Not that there's a reason why my eyes are fine. At least I think they are. But who knows? I'm going to go get my eyes checked and I'll let you guys know. <laughs> I feel like you guys are on this journey of my life lately. So between all my surgeries and my accidents, it's like, what's an eye doctor check, right? All I said to Richard, I said, does it hurt? He said, no, it doesn't hurt. I'm like, all right, then I'll do it. <laughs> we get it with his job, so we might as well, you know. So, but that's, you know, we're not doing that anytime soon, but yeah. I'm just getting through this um, retreat. All right. I will see you guys all next week. I love you guys. We'll see you at 3 o'clock three next week. Same glitter time, same glitter station. I love you guys.